Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Hey, hey, they say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit, but you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business because they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hey, hey, they say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business because they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Hey, hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business because they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Holy Spirit. Activate. Hey. Hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business because they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Okay. I was coming. I was coming. Okay. I had to use the restroom and then I had to run outside. I'm annoying. Okay. Welcome back to my show. Hold on. I have Rex on the on him. One second. Sorry. Sorry. I hate when it's like really dark. I don't like that. Okay. I like the one that's light. Okay, there, there's more light. So, hello everyone. Welcome back to my show, The Shine Devil Wish Show. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. <laughs> As usual. After this, we will be doing a pop up show. That's what I meant to do, but whatever. Um, we'll do a quick pop up show on coffee. We won't be there long, but we will pop up. Why not? So, I love you guys. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit. 
So the title says, Proof Farnsworth Bentley was dating Diddy. Gross. Um, where is he now? I feel like a lot of people want to know um, where Farnsworth is. So, of course, someone found him for you. So I'm like, yeah, he's not far. He's absolutely not far. Um, and Misa Hilton was by Diddy for cheating. That's what that word. Now, we were talking about Misa Hilton earlier. That is Justin Combs' mother. Okay. Um, so we're going to finish off with her because I told you that I will bring you some tea on her. But I have a lot of tea um, on Fonsworth. So we're going to start off with Fonsworth and then we're going to come back to him because we are going to cover um, ASAP Rocky's trial too. Um, a lot of you have been sending me that. So clearly you guys are interested in what I think. So um, we will cover that as well. But um, we are not off Diddy. We absolutely are not. So I figured why not just come forward and bring you the tea um, that I have on Fonsworth Bentley um, as well. I told you we will be getting into the males. Um, so we will be getting into Mace soon, um, Shine, um, Loon, um, a few other people. Um, Usher, you know, we'll be getting into 50 Cent. Um, it's, it's a lot of Kanye. Girl, the list just goes on and on and on and on in. So we'll just get into it all and see if we get bored of it. I didn't do it until he's brought to justice, one or the other. So, um, my girl, please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Okay? Do that. Do that. Now, Shout out to Farnsworth Bentley. I don't have a problem with him at all whatsoever. Shout out to Fly Bougie uh, for being a member for 35 months. Gone, girl. Shout out to Honey Rennie, um, my girl, for being a member for seven months. I love y'all. Oh, my word. Y'all be representing. I love you guys. So, now I don't have a problem with Farnsworth. He's a pretty peaceful person. You know, he's a married man with two children, a boy and a girl. They're super cute. Um, With an actress. Some of you may know her. Some of you... You know, maybe not, but um, we're going to get into her too. We absolutely are because we're nosy. So we're going to get into all of that. So, um, of course, we start with at the beginning, right? Where did Fonsworth and Diddy meet? You know, like, how did this come into fruition, right? Um, so we're going to, that's where we're going to start. That's, that's where we're going to go for it. But um, we're going to finish Misa um, first. And when I say finish, you know, I mean, like, Continue to talk about what we were talking about earlier, because like I said, it's a lot of information. So I like to give it in doses. So it kind of feels like, you know, you kind of, you know, you, you know what we're talking, you know, whatever. So let's get into that. So we were talking about um, Misa and how she had came forward earlier this year after her son, Justin Combs, was arrested for um, a DUI. I mean, whatnot, you know, being intoxicated and we're not coming from Diddy's, um, you know, house and whatnot. And I mean, your girl. So she was very furious about it. She was feeling like her son was becoming his father. And she um, she didn't want that because, again, there's things in the past that Misa hasn't spoke on, you know, that has happened to her um, with Diddy. So when she states, like, you know, I'm not protecting, you know, anyone but my son, you know, and all of that, you know, it's pretty much just up and it's stuck. Did he have to come do damage control? Okay, now I didn't show you this um, on the show earlier, but Diddy did respond to what she said. Now, Diddy and ex Mia have positive exchange after she seemingly shared grievances. Diddy's quote, I love you, Queen. Misa Hilton commented in support of Diddy's latest Instagram post shortly after she seemingly took aim at the musician on the platform. All appears to be good between Sean Diddy Combs and his ex Misa uh, Hilton. Now on, on the last show, we were showing, you know, how she was coming at him, you know and saying like, uh-uh, not, not my baby, uh, you got me messed up. You know, we, we, we didn't send her off the years quiet, acting like it ain't something wrong with you and it's something wrong with you because look at my baby. So the um, girl, that's how she was. She was a protective cub. I mean, a protective mom protecting her cub, right? I'm um, Charlotte Mel Cruz. She says the best investigative blogging in the YouTube screens. I'm um, hashtag Sean WA. Like and subscribe. Become a member. So that moderator. Shout out to Chris. I love you, sweetheart. Thank you for being a member for 35 months. Oh my God, you're so dedicated. You know? I love you. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, so y'all, so Diddy had comments underneath. Now, if you wasn't here earlier, I'm gonna just pull this up real quick. I'm not gonna keep it up, and I'm not rereading it because we read it earlier. 
So um, now, nah, because we, we didn't get into, you know, what happened after, you know, we just got into, you know, the beginning, you know, me, I believe in showing y'all both sides of the coin, you know, me, I'm messy, but at the same time, ho, ho, ho. so right here, Diddy's ex, Misa Hilton, post cryptic social media rant, slamming rapper after son's arrest, okay? Now, look at here. Now, she had put up this post. She said, everyone has uh, has to sit around for years and act like there isn't anything wrong with you. There, this is where the buck stops for me. She also said, okay, we we read all that. Um, and then she said this, I'm not protecting no one anymore, just my son. Okay? Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. Over a thousand people have been in already. Please hit the like. Thank you for being here. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. So after this, Diddy came to do damage control, okay? Now, Diddy has certain words and stuff that I believe he says to these women so that he know that he is threatening them uh, via what I'm saying, but I'm not going to say it out loud, but girl. So I do feel like there's uh, tr trigger words, trigger sentences, the Lord, that he don't use with all of these women. Now, this is where we're at now. Diddy and ex Misa have positive exchange after she seemingly shares grievances. He says, I love you, queen. Now, let's get into this. A week after their son, Justin Combs, was arrested and charged with a misdemeanor for DUI. Um, and as Hilton, 50, appeared to air her grievances with Diddy, 53, on social media shortly after, the two have since shared friendly exchanges and now deleted Instagram comments. Now, y'all know me. I'm nosy. On Friday, the Bad Boy Records hitmaker shared a video on Instagram promoting De Leon tequila and declaring that sometimes you have to say F everybody. Okay? Absolutely. Underneath the post, which used to hashtag F it Friday, Hilton Coastan did his perspective. She said, yep, that's how I feel every day. So Diddy had posted, sometimes you just have to say F everybody. Okay? Mm -hmm. But then Misa had one in the comments to say, yeah. That's how I feel every day. Now, look here. And then Diddy have put happy after Friday. Have a beautiful weekend, everyone. Okay? Now, that's what that we're going to make this big on the screen so y'all can see it. Look at her. Look, look. Now, Diddy have posted that. Sometimes you got to say F everybody. And then underneath it, he's put, hash, you know, happy hashtag after Friday. Have a beautiful weekend, everyone. Hashtag ad. Mm -hmm. So then he said, love all that gay stuff. So then Misa Hilton came under and said, yeah, that's how I feel every day. So then Diddy had added her and said, add me, sir. Look, look, add me, sir. Hilton, I love you, queen. Then right here, this trigger sentence right here, stay in the light. Stay in the light. Okay? That's cold for, uh, uh, it's cold for, I have them get you. Stay in the light. Stay in the light. Stay in the light is what that word. That's what he said. Stay in the light. Stay in the light. Don't go in the light. mean alive. Stay in the light because if you go in the dark, you be. Stitching in the gear, I'm thinking about. And I really miss when Misa was raising my kids. Just like Kim Porter, you can be gone away. You can wake up in a better place. Stay in the light. Don't do that. Okay, stay in the light. Because y'all know he said to Cassie, thank you for staying with me during my dark times. Okay, so he told her to stay in the light, stay breathing. Light is air, oxygen, living. Okay, that's what he said. He said, I love you, queen, stay in the light. I love you, queen. Why I oughta? That's what that word. Okay, that's why the woman was, you know, she backed down after this. She backed down after this. 
So y'all just see, oh, I love you, queen. Stay in the light. That's what y'all see. Mm -mm. I love you, queen. Stay in the light. Stay in the light. That is what he is saying to her. Okay, he didn't say it to Cassie. He didn't say it to o -O 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 Kim Porter. He didn't say it to Gina. He didn't say it to all of them, my girl. All of them, my girl. Stay in the light. Now, that's what that word, okay? That, that's what he did. He did that. He said that to this woman. So, uh, my girl. And so then, last week, a Los Angeles police, Depart uh, police department spokesperson who told people that did his 29-year-old son was arrested after the officer saw his vehicle run a red light, just went right through it. They didn't even stop. They didn't pause. Um, and subsequently conducted, uh, they, they, you know, a traffic stop. A uh, Combs bail was set at $5,000, and he was released on his own recognizance at 12.30 p.m. Online record show. Since then, Hilton cryptically wrote on Instagram on her Instagram story that this is where the buck stops for after for her after sitting around for years and acting like there isn't anything wrong with you. Okay, she then seemingly referenced the rapper's lawsuit against um, Diageo, whom she, he sued last month. Okay, now we have read all this. Okay, we read this earlier. We read it again. So I want y'all to see that. So then, after he said this to her, the, it was it was over with. It was done. She didn't say nothing else. She didn't say nothing else. Nothing else. And he also deleted this. He deleted it, y'all. Because the post was for her. That's why she commented. Because the, the, the meme that he I put up, it says, sometimes you got to say F everybody. And then he put hashtag F it Friday. Have a beautiful weekend, everyone. Okay? And then she came underneath the post and said, yup, that's how I feel every day. Mm. Sometimes you do got to say that. And sometimes you do got to say that. Sometimes you do got to say that, Sean. Okay? Sean comes. Yeah, that's how I feel every day. That's how I feel every day. I want you to touch me. That's how I feel every day. So I'm gay. And I was gone. It, it, he deleted it. Because it was for her. Okay? Because he put that up right after. She had ranted on IG on her story and said, you know, sometimes you know, like look at look at here. Look at here. I'm not protecting nobody but my son. Okay, we've been sitting around all the time acting like ain't nothing wrong with you because you've been paying all our bills and forcing us to be in your life. But it's something wrong with you. It's something wrong with you. Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like over 1500 people in the building. Please hit the like. So, yes, girl, it's this is deleted now. This is gone, my girl. Let's keep going. There's more. There's more. Girl, this is not the end. Y'all. Y'all. Let's finish this. So, um, right here. Okay, because we'll just go with this. Let's talk about this. Because a lot of people don't really know who Misa is. A lot of people just be like, oh, she's Justin Combs' mom. She's much more than that. Um, She's actually much more than that. She's, she's a stylist. So, uh, looking back on the renowned stylist impact on the fash on fashion and music, okay? Now, Diddy, I'm about to pop you again. Or Diddy, I'm gonna keep popping you because I don't like you. So, I mean, I want you to pay for what you've done to people. Um, I'm about to pop you again, All right? Now, I told y'all that Misa has a story. Um, and her story definitely incriminates Diddy a lot. It does, okay? It absolutely does. So, let's get into it, shall we? Let's get into uh, some other stuff you didn't know about Daryl Misa. When asked to think of style icons in music during the 90s and early uh, Nautis, girl, uh, uh, you will likely hear uh, Lil' Kim's name thrown into the mix at least once or twice. Um, what about Missy Elliott's eccentric yet laid back style or Foxy Brown's sultry high fashion looks? We often hear about how these music icons have influenced later generations of fashion, which is in part true, however, one of the most important yet too often overlooked names in hip-hop fashion is Misa Hilton. A stylist and designer from New York, Hilton began building her career in fashion at the age of 17. 17, okay? Her first job as a stylist was working with Jodeci to help in defining their image. Though her suggestion 
of draping the R&B group in hoodies, leather, and caps facing backwards initially fell on deaf ears. Eventually, persuaded Andre Harrell to trust her at all, well, at the time, unorthodox vision. Soon after, Jodeci's career reached new heights, and they set the stage for several uh, successive R&B groups, okay? So she was dressing in, you know, back in the day when y'all saw, you know, the Jodeci boots, because that's what people call them, Jodeci boots. You know, we're not all Misa, okay? Now, Misa was 17, okay? Jodeci was working with Bad Boy, all right? They, they absolutely were. They're working with Diddy. Um, and the first group that she got to, like, style publicly to where people got to see, like, her work was Jodeci. Okay, how does she get that job? Andre Harrell. Okay, who did he worked for? Okay. So allegedly, at the time, no different than little Kim. You know, little Kim was a teenager. You know, when she met, uh, oh, somebody sent memberships. Oh, shout out to who, who sent the memberships? Y'all put their name in the chat. Hold on, let me look. Hold on, let me look. Cause the chat be flying. Um. So at the time, she was 17 and allegedly, okay, didn't brought a Misa to Andre Horea. Okay. She was 17, dressing people. Okay. Now, Diddy was 21 at the time. He was 21, yes, because he's 54 and Misa 50. So she was 17. And Diddy was 21. Okay. She had Justin Combs at 20. Okay. So at 20 years old, she had her baby, well, baby, her son, Justin. Okay. He's 29 years old now. Okay. 29. So allegedly, he was like 20, and Misa was like 16. Okay, when he brought her around. And then she was styling everybody. Lil' Kim, everybody. Okay. Uh, Mary, Foxy Brown, Jodeci. Just so many people. She even styled Jay-Z and Beyonce. Recently. Like, not like, oh, way back in, no. Like, the eight-ish video. The H video. I think she did that whole video. All the styles that they wore throughout the video. Um, which was a beautifully made video. Um, I think that was a video she did. So she's big, you know, she, she gets that coin. Okay. Misa is that girl. She is an icon. All right. Just behind the scenes. <clears throat> so I want people to know that about her. She's not Justin Combs mom, just Justin Combs mom. She is his mom, but she's much more than that. You know, she's definitely much more than that. So I just want to put um, this out here, you know, for the people who don't know who she is. Um, did, I, did I read everything up here? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, a stylist and designer from New York, Hilton began building her career at, um, in fashion at the age of 17. Her first job as a stylist was working with Jodeci to help in defining their image. Through her suggestion of draping the R&B group in hoodies, leathers, and caps facing backwards, initially fell on deaf ears. She eventually persuaded Andre Harrell to trust her at the time, her unorthodox vision. Soon after, Jodeci's career reached new heights. And they set the stage for several successful R&B groups. Only, uh, after only a few years in the game, the fashion pioneer had grown an impressive portfolio, styling some of the biggest names in music. As mentioned in the Netflix documentary, the remix Hip Hop X Fashion, Hilton became renowned for her ability to bring that hip hop swagger to the R&B arena. She was soon styling her clients for publications like Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and Vibe and became responsible for a number of esteemed looks within the music world. Soon after Jodeci Hilton landed her first female client, Mary J. Blige. At the time, Blige was transitioning to a more feminine image and acknowledges Hilton as the person she trusted with her appearance. As we re revealed on the remix, Hilton worked with Blige to ease out her comfort zone and settle on an image that she identified with. It was through... Artists such as Mary J. Blige, Missy Elliott, sorry, Missy Elliott, that Hilton uh, popularized the harsh dark, uh, dark liner and light lipstick combo with mainstream fashion, uh, which also integrating hints of traditional glam and femininity into their signature tomboy looks. 
okay? So videos like Real Love and all of that, you know, Hilton is responsible um, for, you know, Misa, she's responsible for all of these, like, iconic looks um, of these artists, even with um, Missy Elliott, you know, somebody who's dressed extremely tomboyish. Hilton was also the mastermind behind Little Kim's um, monochromatic looks at, uh, in the 1996 video Crush on You. Bright color wigs and matching fur coats, hoop earrings and lingerie. Each outfit made a statement re-evolutionizing what was dismissed as ghetto fashion. In that same year, Hilton was styling Foxy Brown for her I'll Be video featuring Jay-Z and Mary J. Blige's You Are Everything. So she's this this girl. This woman has been working, honey. So um, all of these looks, she's responsible for her little Kim. A lot of little Kim's iconic looks, um, she's responsible for. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, I just wanted to put that out there um, about her. She's not just like his mom, but it was rumored that um, Diddy was dating her at. A young age, um, at the age of, I believe it was 16, allegedly. Um, he was like 20 and she was 16, um, or something like that. And she ended up getting pregnant by him at the age of 20, right? Um, and having Justin Combs. So, yeah. You know how dirty Diddy is, though. Have you noticed Diddy has two sons, right? Two biological sons, which is Justin Combs and um, Christian. He doesn't have a junior. He doesn't have a junior. And at first I thought it because he didn't want certain, like that child to be like the heir. Um, but I don't think it's that. I think it's because the moms didn't want to name their kids after him. <laughs> I was Kim Porter Soul, but I don't feel like she wanted to name her son, Sean. I feel like she didn't want to do that. And I feel the same thing with, you know, Misa, that she didn't want to name her kid after him. And let's get into the control because the control factor has always been there. Shout out to Gene Deal. Okay, shout out to Gene Deal. Let's get into this. Diddy's assistant begged, wait, sorry, Diddy's assistant begged, no, not this, we're not here yet. I wanna talk about Gene Deal because Gene Deal stated that back in the day, while he was being bodyguard for, for Diddy in the 90s and whatnot, that Diddy put his hand Mm -hmm. Oh, Misa, girl. Diddy's former bodyguard details his alleged woman eating past. Okay. Diddy's former bodyguard is back again. And this time he's spilling tea about hip hop mogul's alleged woman eating past. In the video, Gene Deal says Diddy is a recovered woman eater who allegedly assaulted his baby mama, Misa Hilton, because he thought she was cheating on him with someone from EPMD. Gene also says Diddy allegedly tried to Kim Porter too, but Kim took that, didn't take that ish and, you know, harmed Diddy's wrist, which ultimately landed him in the hospital. Okay. So Gene doesn't just allege, shout out to over 2K in the building. Um, Gene did not just allege that he did this to um, Kim. He also said the same thing about Misa. Okay. He also said this about Misa, um, it's Justin's father. Okay, y'all should talk to Diddy and Misa <laughs> about that. It, it, well, as far as I'm concerned, Diddy takes care of Justin. He put him through college. He took care of him his whole life. Um, all of that. I mean, I'm not saying y'all lying. I mean, because look at Quincy. Quincy's definitely wasn't um his son. But if he had it um his way, yeah. I definitely heard about that. Um, um, <laughs> he took care of Quincy too. Yeah, he did. He did. He know. He did. He know for taking people churn. He know for taking. Yes, he, she is Justin's godmother. He know for taking people churn. That's what he do. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. We have over two thousand people in the building. If we can get up to fifteen hundred likes during this live, that would be amazing. So, um, yeah. So Gene said this about. Diddy and Misa, you know, that back in the day, he saw Diddy put his hands on Misa. That 
and I'm not gonna. I feel like Gene Dill is a truth teller. Shout out to Gene Dill. Um, y'all make sure I get over there and subscribe. Tell Gene I sent you. Um, Gene is amazing, and I believe that when he speaks, he speaks truth. I don't believe he speaks things to exaggerate them to for attention, you know, or anything like that. I feel like he just speaks on what he saw. He just talks about his experience and. Because uh, a lot of people say like, well, if Gene's telling the truth, why hasn't Diddy did anything to Gene? Because Gene, he already knows. If anything happens to Gene, he already knows who we're going to think, you know, um, immediately. So some things are just too obvious. And I believe Diddy knows that Gene Deal is not afraid of him. He's not afraid of him or anybody he'll send. He knows Gene is not afraid. And I think a lot of what Diddy has heard fr from Gene and the things that Gene has said, he knows is true. So, you know, but since Gene Deal doesn't have, you know, the audience of 40 to 50 million people subscribe to him or something like that, Diddy doesn't, you know, really take it like as something he feels that he needs to act on. But the bigger Gene Gene's name get, the you know, the more of a target um, he could definitely become. And Gene, I feel, is aware of these things and is not afraid. He's not afraid of Diddy. I, I, you know, I don't. And I respect Gene because it's like, why would I be afraid of someone I used to protect? Kind of like being afraid of your kid. Like, I used to protect you. Like, I'm not afraid of you. I'll handle you. Like, I I'll do what I need to do. You know what I mean? I'm not afraid of you. You know, so it's, I feel like it's, you know, if anything, Diddy is Gene's son. So, um, yeah, that's just uh, how I feel about that. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. So we're going to move on into Fonsworth Bentley. That's who we're going to move into now. Um, I know a lot of y'all have been waiting on that and update on Fonsworth and, you know, all that good stuff. So uh, we'll definitely do that. So let's do it. Okay. Just now we can pull this up. Diddy's assistant, be well, Diddy's assistant begged Diddy to take him away from his hater boss. So this is important because Diddy and Fonsworth always kind of leave this out of their story. So we're going to go into the beginning of Diddy and Fonsworth's relationship, and then we're going to go throughout the history, and then I'll give you the update um, on Fonsworth. So Fonsworth Bentley, okay, has always been fond of Diddy and always wanted to be, like, all up up under him, okay? So Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, is well known for his music and business ventures that launched him into stardom. The artist is well known um, that, well, sorry, the, the artist is also well known that his assistant Derek Watkins, which is Fonsworth, um, who renamed Fonsworth Bentley, also attained fame. Here's what Diddy's assistant said about the first time they met and how he texted for the job. Okay, so he sent Diddy a text message for the job. Let's get into that. And also, this whom he renamed to Fonsworth Bentley. Now, technically, Diddy, Diddy did not rename Fonsworth. Biggie gave Fonsworth his name. Okay. Biggie Smalls, the notorious B.I.G., Christopher Wallace. Okay. He called Fonsworth Bentley, Fonsworth Bentley. Okay. That is where he got that name. And Diddy kept calling him it after Biggie said it first. Okay. So Fonsworth said that himself. He said, Biggie actually gave me that name. Okay, so when he first came around them, they did not call him Fonsworth. They called him Derek. <laughs> you know, they called him by his name. Biggie one day called him Fonsworth Bentley. Okay, so that's where it came from. Um, not Diddy. So Diddy did not give him that name. Now, I know a lot of y'all saying in the chat, I thought he was gay. I thought he was gay. I thought he was gay. Fonsworth is married to a woman. Um, we're going to get into that. Um, he is married to a woman. They have two children together, and they're still married to this day. Um, so, okay. So he texted for the job. Diddy's assistant, Derek Watkins, AKA Fonsworth Bentley, dressed to impress before he ever met Diddy. It took years for Diddy to invite Derek, AKA Fonsworth Bentley, to become his assistant. But Watkins made sure to dress to impress while in New York City, as he never knew when opportunities would arise. Prior to meeting the superstar, he worked at the Ralph Lauren store on Madison Avenue. Okay. Uh, fun fact, Sam Sr. works for Ralph Lauren. So shout out to Sam Sr. Shout out to Sam Sr. Um, I wonder if he knows Fonsworth. 
Um, Bonford said, I would always go out dressed, Watkins told Angela Yee in a 2009 interview about meeting Diddy and becoming his assistant. Quote, the only people dressed in any of the little hip hop events were the Wall Street guys. This is gray suit, navy suit, white suit, you know, very boring. So I'm in the chocolate brown three-piece lavender shirt, you know, with chocolate brown suede blessing heads. I stood out. Watkins then explained that he would see Diddy at events and he'd say a few words and walk off. It became almost like an inside joke, Watkins continued. It's called flirting. You didn't stand out. He found you attractive. Anybody wearing a bright color in a room full of, like if it's a cocktail event, most people wear like black or gray, you know, or something like that suit wise, you coming in in a bright pink polka dotted, like you're gonna stand out, like no matter what. So anybody coming in with something bright colored um, would stand out in the group of people um, that was present. So no, that it was checking you out. That's what that were. And you noticed that he was checking you out and y'all would flirt. So when you would see Diddy, you would flirt with Diddy. It's not, oh, it's an inside joke. You know, I just, you know, walk up to, that sounds like a lot of before we got married stories. Like that, that's weird to say, that oh, it was an inside joke. No, it wasn't, he didn't know you. It's an inside joke with somebody you know, not someone you keep seeing. Like <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. Shout out to the 2.4 in the building. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. So this gives flirting. Um, so I don't want Fonsworth to forget um, that he said that, but he said it was an inside joke. Eventually, Derek Watkins and Diddy developed a report, a report after seeing each other at multiple times at New York events. The entrepreneur gave Watkins his number, and they were both at Justin P's Diddy Soul restaurant in Chelsea. Why would Diddy give you his number? For what? You're at an event. So you're not there like working like as a bus boy or something. No, you're literally like at an event. Like you're there with him. Like, well, not like literally, but like just like you came, he came like to the event. So you never said that you told him that you're an assistant or you're looking for a job or anything. Like you never said anything like that. So for Diddy to give you his phone number, it's like, well, why? <laughs> What, what would you give him phone number? What, what would he give you his phone number for? Like, I don't understand the context. Like, it's not like y'all had a business conversation or anything like that. You said you just kept seeing each other. Okay, well, if I keep seeing a female that I'm interested in, like, is she bad? And I keep seeing her, it's like, well, you know, maybe here, let me give you my number. Because what other reason? Like, he said it took years before he became Diddy's assistant. It's not like Diddy saw him, knew he needed work, and boom, he was, no. They would see each other at events. What event, again, Fonsworth is not to be disrespectful, but at that time he worked at Ralph Lauren. So not to say that he's a nobody, but he's a nobody. Like compared to being in a room with like a Diddy you know, or something like that. I mean, if, for Diddy to be there, you're we're going to just assume that there are other really important people there because he is. So why wouldn't, you know? So what type of events were y'all meeting at? For you to be who you were at the time, Bentley, which was no one, you didn't get a name until Diddy. Literally had gave, you know, <laughs> literally gave you a name. Um, So, well, B-I-G, like literally, like I gave you a name. So where were you guys? To where you kept bumping into him. Because you being at his restaurant was no coincidence. You were there on purpose. You were there, Fonsworth, because you knew Diddy was going to be there. So that, that's why you were there. So it was like, you kept... Let's keep going. So, um, my girl, so I'm just saying. Finally, Watkins contacted Diddy after working a shift at a restaurant. Diddy responded several times asking... Who was contacting him? <laughs> like, who is this? 
And now I understand this is the importance of branding, Watkins continued. I said, it's Derek Watkins, the suit master. Very gay. Very gay. Very gay. But whatever. Not the suit master. Um, the suit master. Um, he says, at first, Diddy didn't reply. Watkins prayed to his father and God to know what to say next. Why did you feel so pressured? Like, this is so gay. Finally, he leveled with Diddy and essentially asked, for a job right there. He said, please don't make me go back to my hater boss. Please don't make me go back to my hater boss. I want to go with you. Let me come with you. Please. A job doing what? Did he already had a stock list? Did he already have a stock list? And he already had like five assistants. What was the reason? Please don't make me go back to my hitter boss. So did he never offered him a job? Mm -mm. He begged Diddy to be with him. This is Fonsworth words. And it's on this interview. Like you can hear it in audio with him and Angelique. The video is right here. He says everything that's printed. Everything that's printed. So he begged Diddy. Please, please, help me, please, help me, please. Please set the like, please set the like, please set the like, please set the like. Um, yeah. So um Somebody just said something about the umbrella. Um, Diddy needed an, an umbrella. See, here's the thing. When Diddy did an interview with Oprah back in the day when Fonsworth was his assistant, Diddy said that was Fonsworth's idea, the umbrella. That wasn't Diddy's idea. He never told him to hold an umbrella over him. He said that was Fonsworth. He said that was his idea. You know, for Fonsworth to walk around and hold that dress in a suit and all that, that was his idea. It wasn't Diddy was like, I want you dressed up, you know. And but I like, no, that's he just dressed like that. And then he wanted um Fonsworth wanted to hold the umbrella over him because he wanted to be seen. Like he uh, that was his sneaky way of being seen. <laughs> like, being seen. And then somebody said in the chat that um he was his butler. Your butler don't. Did Alfred leave the back cave for her? <laughs> Did Alfred leave the back cave for her? <laughs> girl, Alfred didn't leave that back cave, girl. He said, he didn't leave her. He, uh, Batman didn't take uh, Bruce Wayne didn't take them uh, Alfred nowhere with him, girl. Alfred was at the house. Now he did not, not leave Wayne Mansion, nigga. Now that's just what that work. Now the boy, he did not need to go gay ass. He did not need to go. Nah. Jeffrey left to go party that one time at the club and him and Will was uh, uh, on the same girl. girl. That, that was the only time. Other than that, he ain't go nowhere. Jeffrey didn't go nowhere. Jeffrey really didn't leave that house. He barely wanted to go to the hospital when Viv had that baby. He didn't want to go see Nikki. Mm. He, he, Jeffrey. Yeah. Now, can I y'all tried it? Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like, subscribe if you have not already. But no, nah, so Fonsworth didn't have to go nowhere with Diddy. If you the butler, butler at home. 
That's why they have to throw assistant. Went from Butler to assistant Butler to, to, to just assistant. You know what I'm saying? He, he had all type of, but he was always around. He was always around. He's always around. Let's keep on going. He was always around. So Fonsworth said, I remember the day exactly. Watkins told the New York Times, it's going to be in the movie about my life. Sean waved his hands in my face and said, your life just changed. Are you ready? Mm. Oh. Oh. Move right along. Oops. Let's get into Fonsworth and what he's got going on after Diddy. Actually, during Diddy. No, we we're gonna do after we're gonna do during Diddy because the, the T just get thicker and just get thicker. Now, Diddy and Fonsworth, okay. They separated because Fonsworth allegedly wanted to venture off and do different things. And he did. Um, he did the VH1 show from G's to Gents. He uh, came out with his own album. Um, you know, on all of that work with Kanye and a lot of Kanye's music. Um, he was having with Kanye albums, literally, like credits he has on Kanye's albums. So, um, yeah, him and Kanye worked, worked really closely um, together. So let, let's get into, you know, what happened to Diddy's former assistant, Fonsworth Bentley? Shout out to Nikki Swift. It all started with an umbrella. In the early 2000s, Derek Watkins famously became known as Fonsworth Bentley, a play on the character Bootney Lee Farnsworth from the 1975 film Let's Do It Again. After assuming the role of an umbrella-toting full-time butler for a multi-million dollar producer, Sean Diddy Combs, for a point of reference, it happened somewhere between the rapper going by Puff Daddy and P. Diddy. In addition of Bentley, of, of Bentley to Diddy's entourage and his newfound persona were, were a result of the rapper needing to clean up his act after being acquitted for GUN possession and bribery charges stemming from a nightclub pow powing in 1999. Per the fader, along with the rebranding, came a new wardrobe and the then 27-year-old Atlanta native as a proper usher for Diddy into the world of being a sophisticated gentleman. It didn't take long for the former personal valet and assistant to grow his own brand and build a name for himself in television, music, and even literature. While Bentley may have put down the umbrella for greater pursuits, he definitely made his mark on pop culture and made himself a hip hop topic of conversation for years to come. Fonsworth Bentley first appeared on an episode of Making the Band 2. According to Vix in 2005, Fonsworth Bentley made his grand appearance next to Diddy in season two of Making the Band. Initially, the tall, dapper personal assistant made everyone question what exactly was happening. But soon enough, Bentley became a pivotal part of getting the potential R&B stars in line and ready to appear as a distinguished gentleman. OK, so at that point in time, no one understood where when making the band two was going on. No one understood what was going on with Bentley. They're like, who is he? <laughs> who is that? <laughs> you know, please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. Um, shout out to Lionheart. You know, people were just like, who is that? Who is that? You know, he was just standing next to Diddy with an umbrella. Again, I believe Fonsworth stated, thank you for the super sticker line, Hart. I believe Fonsworth, because Diddy said the umbrella holding it over his head was Fonsworth's idea. So I think that he did that so that he could be in, you know, the limelight with Diddy. Instead of being in the background, this pulls him to the forefront because he was mentioned, but no one ever like really talked about him because no one really ever saw him, you know, um, depending on unless Diddy was like out and about. So when Diddy was like on vacations and stuff like that, um, sometimes you would see Fonsworth holding an umbrella over him, you know, and stuff like that. But nobody knew who he was. So I believe Diddy brought Fonsworth on to making the band too, because people were assuming Fonsworth was gay and that Diddy was gay and that this was Diddy's man, you know, or guy or Bo. Um, there, there was pictures of them in the National Enquirer, you know, and stuff like that on the front of magazines everywhere. Like, who is this guy? Because he just kept, the first time people were really paying attention to him. Then, as he started holding that umbrella, people started paying more attention. So, when the paparazzi would take a snap of Diddy, they kept seeing him. So, they're like, Who is this guy in this suit holding? Like, who is he? 
because everybody knew Diddy's assistant. It was this white lady at the time. I forgot her name, but she was his assistant at the time. So it would be weird for Farnsworth to be sitting there holding this umbrella over Diddy while Diddy's talking to his assistant. It's like, who is this guy? Because <laughs> that's his assistant that, you know, he, whatever. So I believe he brought Farnsworth on the show so that people wouldn't think that he was gay or that Farnsworth was like his guy because he, you know, to Diddy, you know, he's, he's not, you know, my guy. So, um, yeah, so because uh, everyone assumed that Farnsworth was gay, that it was just an assumption. But people were like, oh, he's gay, he's gay, he's gay, he's gay. Even while he was on making the band, um, people still assumed that he was gay. So the personal assistant slowly rose to fame um, um, as more and more hip hop elites wanted to learn more from Bentley's high level of style, fashion, and upper tier of sophistication. Thanks to his wealth of knowledge, the former valet went on to land his own MTV reality show in 2008 from G's to Jen's where he taught wayward men the ways of being a gentleman. I still love that show. It was a really good show. Um, by the time he snagged his own reality show, it was very clear uh, that Bentley's umbrella carrying days were long gone. In fact, he went on to work with the likes of Kanye West, Gucci Mane, Andre 3000, and the Black Eyed Peas, and many more. So, um, yeah, so, and this is his wife. Hey, this, this is his wife. Bonsworth Bentley went on to pen an etiquette book in 2007 titled Adventure Swagger. So he wrote a book and it did really well. It became one of the New York um, Times bestsellers. Um, how to use mannerisms, confidence, and style to get ahead. Bentley attributes his accomplishment to one key equation, manners and confidence plus style equals swagger, per the book's description. With this formula, Bentley transferred himself, transformed himself into an icon um, of unfathomable grace, elegance, and good manners. And now he's on a mission to help you step up your game, advance your swagger, and get ahead and live out your dreams. Okay, so um, right here, after making a name for himself and stepping out of Diddy's shadow, the fashion trendsetter transitioned into music professionally when he grew his family personally. Billy married actress Fawn Chambers. Okay, so she's in a few movies. I remember she was in um, White Chicks. She was um, Marlon's wife in the movie White Chicks. Um, she's been in, you know, some movies. So she's definitely been acting um, in Hollywood for quite some time, beautiful woman. And they have two beautiful kids together, boy and a girl. Um, so yes, he is still married to her to this day until um, right now, uh, uh, November 20th, 2023, they're still married. Um, and yeah, so this is who he married. And again, they're still together. Now she's definitely after Diddy. Um, she, yeah, she is a good actress. I, yeah, I like her. Um, so yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah, she absolutely is. So that's who he's married to. They still are married to them, till this day. Um, but let's let me go back up here and uh, get into this. So when making the band, I wanted to tap on that. So when making the band, the band, remember Dylon from making the band? Farnsworth Bentley hated Dylon. He hated Dylon. Dylon and him would argue all the time. Dylon would argue with, well, it wasn't even Dylon. It was Fonsworth. Fonsworth was always arguing with Dylon. Now, Dylon was definitely shown special privilege by Diddy. That is fact. He was shown special privilege in the band. He was. Diddy did so much for him. But he was on probation, all the like he did a lot, basically like got him off probation, you know, all type of stuff that he did for Dylon. He Dylon got special treatment. Diddy was definitely attracted to Dylon. Okay. Now Dylon was a good rapper. He was. He was one of the best um in the group. And he would definitely him, Fonsworth, during making the band seasons, would tell Diddy to get rid of Dylon. He would. He would. Like every other episode, he was when they went on tour, he was telling Diddy to get rid of him. That's the one. Diddy really had a fondness for Dylon. Dylon. So I, I'm not going to say anything was going on between Dylon and Diddy. I don't know. But Diddy was definitely attracted to Dylon. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what Diddy says. You were definitely attracted to Dylon. You treated him very special. Dylon got special treatment. Everybody else, because Diddy used to dog Sarah, and Sarah was beautiful. He used to dog her. 
he's dog her. He dogged everybody in the band group. That's the only group, remember, that walked for cheesecake. He ain't make my walk no damn cheesecake. Because he couldn't stand none of them. He really liked Dylan, though. He really did. Dylan got sh shown special treatment. And that is also why the other bandmates would argue with Dylan because they would see it. Like, you're getting treated special. Like, he like you better than us. He like you more than us. You know, um, type of situation. So, Diddy turned the group against Dylan, and not even on purpose. He turned the group against Dylan because he liked them so much. And that's when Fonsworth, I feel like, was starting to get jealous. He wanted Dylan gone. <laughs> It was like every other episode, you know, that Dylan really needs to leave. You know, I really don't see why you like he was literally trying to convince Diddy. And Diddy didn't hear him out, but he would never cancel Dylan. Like he he really liked him and he didn't like it. Because the second he really didn't. He really did not. So um agree. So he he really did not like. It him at all whatsoever but let's keep reading um i, I definitely want to point out did i want to point anything else out um okay so during this situation remember the incident with shine um inside of the club please hit the like please hit the like please hit the like so the incident back in the day when shine went to prison for allegedly opening you know pow pow inside of the club that diddy and jennifer lopez was at Fonsworth was there. Fonsworth was there. Fon you, you, I feel like Fonsworth will never come forward about him and Diddy. About who Diddy is or, you know, because I believe still to this day, Diddy has Fonsworth wrapped around his finger. To this day. Like right now. In 2023, he still has Fonsworth wrapped around his finger. Um, I feel like Fonsworth will never say anything against Diddy. Um, and another thing, <clears throat> Fonsworth left when Cassie came. That's another thing, too, I want to point out with this. Fonsworth left in about 2007, 2000, late, late 2006, early 2007. Is when Fonsworth left Diddy. It's when they broke up, if you ask me. Um, and I believe it's part of the reason him and Kim Porter, uh, why Kim Porter left him in 2000, well, not left him, but was like over it because Diddy was with Fonsworth. Everywhere they went on vacation, Kim and Kim Porter, with like with the kids and stuff at the time that she just had with, Fonsworth was always there. Always. He was always with them. Um, so when Kim Porter says that the baby across town um, wasn't the reason that she left Diddy, you know, one of the reasons um, she kept saying, I believe Fonsworth was a, not that she, I just think that she, when Cassie came, she took a lot of attention from a lot of people. So all of them was leaving Diddy at the same time. Okay. Fonsworth was leaving him. Uh, Kim was like, everybody was being pushed to the side. Everybody. Like when Cassie came into the picture. So it was like Diddy lost his mind, you know, when she, when he saw her literally like lost his mind so it's like he was pushing kim out of the way he got rid of kim he got you know put her basically in the attic you know and got rid of her and then he put fonsworth in the other side of the attic you know so it's like he never really got rid of him like a lot a lot of things fonsworth that i'm seeing that belong to you still you still credit diddy for a lot of things and he's even some of your uh, music diddy has credits for too so diddy still has a lot over you know fonsworth's head but I do think Fonsworth tried to rebel because Diddy and Kanye have not liked each other for years. Like, they do not like each other, right? And Fonsworth has worked a lot with Kanye West. So I think that that's a major friction. Major friction. Because 
Spawn's one, I think he hasn't posted on IG in like three years. Like it's been like years since he's posted on IG, but he did post Diddy. He was still posting Diddy. He still was. So I, I still believe that Diddy has him in his pocket. Like he said, happy 50th birthday to Diddy, um, you know, and whatnot. So when they fell out, I'm not going to say when they fell out. When Fonsworth stopped writing about, or not writing, sorry, talking about Diddy and posting Diddy was when Diddy and Kanye fell out that last time over the whole Kim Kardashian, the well, one not Kim Kardashian, the White Lives Matters shirt when they had a public falling out, um, kind of. I'm about that, you know, when Kanye was blasting everybody's text messages, you know, and all of that stuff. Him and Diddy really fell out, like threatening each other. Oh, and I have those receipts too. Um, never threatening each other. So that's when Fonsworth stopped sharing Diddy, talking about Diddy, all of that. Because he still works with Kanye, Fonsworth, Bentley. They he still works with them. So I think. You know, that's what made him kind of fall back, you know, from Diddy, because it's just like Fonsworth, you know, because it's just like, you know, I work with Kanye, you know, I can't be, you know, because Kanye making an album right now and allegedly Fonsworth has been a part of this project too. So Fonsworth is still very so much doing his thing. He's just doing it in the background. He's just not like up in the forefront, but, you know, he's still making really good money. He's he's producing, he's still working with uh, other artists. I mean, something like Pharrell. Um, and other people, like, he's still doing his thing, but he's just, you know, doing it in the background. Um, so let's keep reading. But yeah, he was there um, at that pop Halloween because allegedly because, you know, there's a rumor out there that fines were Bentley set up Biggie. I'm just saying, I can pull it up. If y'all want me to pull it up next show, I can pull it up. Diddy said out of his own mouth that Biggie, okay, Diddy said out of his own mouth that Biggie was not supposed to come to LA with him. Biggie was supposed to go overseas and perform. He was supposed to go overseas. Allegedly, Fonsworth made Biggie change his mind and told Biggie to go to L.A. You know, you should just go to come to L.A. with us. You know, you should just. Fonsworth set up all of the travel and all of that stuff for Biggie to get to where Puffy was. So Puffy thinks back in his mind, like, he's like, I wish Biggie would have just went. Puffy sat out his mouth. I wish that Biggie would have just went, you know, with the original plans. But since he wanted to come where Diddy was, which allegedly him and Fonsworth Bentley, Biggie and Fonsworth Bentley talked, and he ended up telling Fonsworth, okay, well, or not Fonsworth, um, he ended up calling Biggie, or Biggie ended up calling Diddy, sorry, and saying like, hey, you know, I'm gonna come down there with you, blah, blah, blah. And Diddy was like, well, no, you're supposed to be going overseas. And then Biggie was like, no, I'm going with you. So then Diddy called Fonsworth, and Fonsworth set up all the travel, you know, and all of that stuff for Biggie to go where he was. So I'm not saying like Fonz were like literally set up Biggie, but I'm just saying if Biggie was set up, which it seems he was, then Fonz was a part of it. And I'm not saying like literal, like he knew exactly what was going to happen to Diddy. I mean, other people have that theory. I haven't seen any like proof of that, but it is a fact that Fonz got Biggie to where Diddy was, that he did all the you know, arrangements, you know, and whatnot, even all the way up into the vehicle that he got pop out in. He's all of that. So, um, but yeah, I, I can pull that up next show and show you um, that. And also in the bar, allegedly, <laughs> during the pop howling with Shine and Biggie, or Biggie, sorry, Diddy and Jennifer Lopez, when that pop howling happened, allegedly Shine got in the way. The person that actually was allegedly reaching for the weapon. Fonsworth to do anything for, uh, for Diddy. Fonsworth to do anything for Diddy. So it's allegedly Fonsworth. If Sean didn't allegedly grab the weapon. If Sean was a Sean took the right because he was there. 
Farnsworth allegedly was going to take the rap. But Shine took it. But Shine took it. But Diddy did that, Pow Pow. That, that was him. That, that was him. It, it, it was not Shine. It, it, it was not. <laughs> it, 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 trust me. Um, it was not Shine. It was Diddy. And if, I don't know how exactly Shine name came up, but Farnsworth was supposed to, supposedly going to take the blame for Diddy um, initially. And Shine ended up doing it. I don't know. It's because he already had a rap sheet, you know, and whatnot. But Shine did that. Yeah, he, Shine did not do that. Shine is innocent. He did not do that. So let's keep going. So according to the VIX, in 2005, Fonzo Bentley made his grand appearance next to Diddy. Oh, we already read this, sorry. Um, Jesus Gents. Okay, we're going to Black Eyed Peas, Kanye. Fonsworth went on, we read that as well, sorry. After making a name for himself, stepping out with Diddy Shadow, the uh, fashion trendsetter transitioned into music professionally where when he grew his family personally, Bentley married actress Fon Chambers in 2010 and have two children, Daniel and Zoe. In addition to having writing credits on a few of Kanye's albums, including Jesus and The Life of Pablo, Bentley has also written and produced songs for ABC's hit show Blackish, as well as created choreography for the promotional video for the spinoff show Grownish per the Boomba. While Bentley's far from an umbrella holding personal assistant these days, he and Diddy still seemingly have a good relationship. In 2019, he wished the mogul a happy birthday writing this hashtag, this is 50, will be epic. Okay, so as of 2019, it's only 2023. So as, as of 2019, with him talking about Diddy, they didn't have, they don't have any beef publicly, you know, as we know. But we know that there is smoke because Fonsworth was treated very badly by Diddy's crew. So like back in the day, there was this um, documentary on Little Kim's album. Um, it, it, not like a literal documentary, but they uh, used to record everything. So back in the day, when they would go around recording Little Kim, like during you know the you know camcorder, old you know ninety nine you know camcorder, when they would record her, Fonsworth Bentley, like Junior Mafia, and all people, they treated him horribly. They treated Fonsworth horribly, and Diddy would allow it. He a lot, they treated Fonsworth like trash. They treated him so even Biggie, even Biggie, God rest his soul. Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. Um, I don't know, maybe we're gonna have to go somewhere like we have to watch that because they treated him bad. Kim was nice to him, little Kim. She was nice to him, but everybody around Biggie, I mean Biggie, around Diddy, all of his artists. And all of that, they didn't start respecting him till around like making the band. That's when you know people started to put a little respect on his name because they took him as a joke. Nobody took him seriously uh, in the bad boy camp. They treated him bad. I'm surprised he lasted. Um, how how bad they used to treat him? Oh yeah, talk about him like a dog. Uh, treat him like a, a bellhop. Uh, all of them, they treated him like the help. They did. Little Kim was the only person, from what I gathered, treated him nicely. Diddy was mean to him. Like, all everybody was mean to him. Nope, nobody was nice to him. They would play the cruelest pranks on him um, and all of that stuff. They bullied him badly. Yeah. They bullied him bad, even Biggie. I mean, him and Biggie had a relationship, you know, so him and Biggie were cool. But like when everybody else was playing puns and jokes and stuff, Biggie, you know, kind of fed into it. But um, yeah, he was bullied when the, I would call it bullying, um, what they were all doing to him and how they would treat him. And they would ridicule him, call him gay, you know, um, all type of stuff like that. Um, they, they would call him all type of things, um, call him Diddy's little F boy. You know, and whatnot, you know, like it was bad. I felt bad for him. I'm like, oh, poor guy. Like, you just dealt with it, huh? I guess anything for clout. Um, I mean, it, a hazing is something that is temporary. This went on until he left. That's why everybody just knew that 
Farnsworth was going to have crazy things to say about Diddy because of how bad he was treated, even on Making a Band. Like, go watch. Like, he, they treated him bad. They did. A hazing ends. This was the whole thing. That's bullying. You know, when it just keeps going and going and going and going and going. And it's like nobody respected him. And other people would just follow through. So they would see how the other people treated him. And they were just treated in the same way. Like, okay, well, everybody else treats you like trash. Everybody else treats you like you don't matter. So, you know, I'm going to do it too. But if everybody respected him, then, you know, other people will follow suit. You know, but like they coming in, like the new artists and stuff coming in, you know, and whatnot. No, he was treated horribly by Diddy's camp, by Bad Boy. Horribly. That's why the first opportunity Fonsworth had to get out, the only thing Fonsworth liked about the situation, I feel, was Diddy. That's the only thing I feel like he liked. He liked being alone with Diddy. He didn't like dealing with other people and whatnot, but he had, Diddy had to find a place for him because, I mean, it wasn't really, you know, you're supposed to be my butler. You're supposed to be at home. Like, you ain't supposed to be here. So with him traveling with Diddy and stuff like that, Diddy had to put him to work. He had to give him something to do. So that's when he kind of became like over, you know, the making of band people. And then it went from that to him getting his own show from G's to Gents, which I think only went like two seasons. It only did like two seasons. And um, I believe that after, you know, the that he chose, like, he's like, I'm, I'm never going back to Diddy because he didn't. So he makes it seem, because everybody wants to know why they parted, allegedly, because Fonsworth Bentley wanted to move into other things. He said out of his own mouth. He said that there was other things that he wanted to explore, other opportunities that he had been given, and that's what he wanted to do. And so there was, like, no bad blood, you know, or anything like that, but let's keep going. Fonsworth Bentley went from small screens to reality television and music videos to the big screen appearing in numerous films. He made his movie debut in 2003 in Honey alongside Makai Pfeiffer, Jessica Alba, and Romeo Miller. He played a barber in Pfeiffer's Barbershop. The following year, he had a speaking role as a salesman in Fat Albert starring Kenan Thompson. Bentley later worked with Outkast in 2006 in the star-studded su surrealistic musical Out of Wild, where he voiced the drinker, the, sorry, voiced the drinking flask of Big Boy's slick-talking character Rooster. In 2017, The Think Like a Man 2, the sequel to the movie adaption of Steve Harvey's controversial book, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. He made a cameo as well as a, sorry, as a well-dressed shot caller. Kevin Hart needs to learn how to pay his bills. If he doesn't pay his bills, there are people out here that aren't afraid to talk to him about that. Told He told the hip hop, uh, hip hop Hollywood adding. And so that's what my character does in the film. Over the years, through his debonair cameos in movies, music videos, TV, and of course his umbrella, Bentley solidified himself as a leader in giving hip hop streetwear a flat, I'm sorry, <laughs> a flair of sophistication. Um, so let's get into the rumors because you know I'm messy. Um, let's get into the rumors, Fonsworth. You tried it. So do y'all know how P. Diddy got his name P. Diddy? Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. Do you know how he got his name P. Diddy? Let's get into that. What is this? Okay. P. Did He. What P. Diddy, what had P. Diddy so excited before running the New York City Marathon? Was it the thrill of the race, the pressure to make good on his promise, or was it, as the New York Post claims, he had the urge to go to the bathroom? Now, that's not weird, right? That's not weird. This is what's weird. The reports, uh, the Post reports, Nature was calling P. Diddy like a hopped up telemarketer and the lines for the porta potties weren't moving. Finally, according to the report, Diddy summoned his assistant, Fonsworth Bentley, to help him out. And Diddy ended up doing his business in a plastic bag. So Fonsworth Bentley held out a plastic bag, or opened a plastic bag, and held it there open while Diddy peed in it.
I bull issue not. So he held up, like, took a, a plastic bag, like, folded it, I'm assuming, held it open because the porta potty lines were so long. And he held the bag so that Diddy could pee in it. There's no way of him not seeing Diddy's peen. That's a lot. I'm like, <laughs> so you held open a bag while he peed in it? Why? Why? And I'm not supposed to believe that that your that your relationship didn't go further than that. You got to feel mighty comfortable to sit there and hold the bag open for another man to literally like, and then you're holding the urine. Gross. But if you dating somebody, like if you like go with this person, like, I mean, correct. It was in front of other people in front of, well, like to the side, not, not like right in the, right at the marathon, you know, like we're you know, in front of the whole crowd. You know, no, not like that. Privately, but still. Let me read that again. Literally. Literally. The Post reports nature was calling P. Diddy like a hopped-up telemarketer, and the lines for the porta potties weren't moving. Finally, according to the report, Diddy summoned his assistant, Fonsworth Bentley, to help him out. And Diddy ended up doing his business in a plastic bag. Gross. Wow. Because it's like, you're a dude. You can just go pee in the grass somewhere real quick. That's how, you know, he used to degrade Fonsworth. Okay, he would definitely do that. Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. So that's where Pete did here. <laughs> Let's get into some more. There's more tea. There is more tea. There is more tea. Because you know what I mean? I like to come and receive. Because I'm like, okay, well, if you peeing in bags, it's like gross. Gross. Let's get into this. There's more tea. There absolutely is. There is more tea. Current Stephens, also known as Superhead, is writing a tell-all. Now, this was posted in 2005. Is writing a tell-all, which happened. She did. Current Stephens did write a tell-all. Is writing a tell-all. And many R&B and hip-hop stars she has slept with. Recent, with about, sorry. Uh, many hip-hop stars and she slept with. Recently, she was over her saying okay, that she... Came in very late from an event and caught P. Diddy in the bed with Fonsworth Bentley. She did say that. She did. In her book, she said, because she was, well, not dating Diddy at the time, but she was sleeping with him. Okay. And she said that one time, you know, she kind of, you know, crept in, you know, she was late. And when she got there, Diddy and Fonsworth were in the bed together. There's more. There's more. There's more. Hold on. There's more. Girl, there's more hip hop stars to be outed. Okay, the hip hop scene is about to be rocked. Okay, well that well if that's if you believe Terrence Dean's books, a uh, book publicist, the former MTV executive will soon release Hiding in Hip Hop, which allegedly exposes the genre's biggest homos from the release. Okay, now Terrence Dean worked for MTV for a very long time and knew a lot of people. Went to a lot of parties, um, especially like Diddy. You know, people like that, like, I mean, the, the hottest parties and stuff like that, you name it, um, he was definitely there. 
So um, let's get into what was in the book. Hiding in Hip Hop uncovers a hidden and well-known unspoken secret. Deep within confines of, the confines of hip hop is a prominent gay subculture, a world that industry insiders are keenly aware of but choose to ignore, according to Dean. The book is filled with intrigue, sexy celebrity bed partners, abundance of drugs, and of course, the down low gay men and celebrities in the entertainment industry. This tale, a long time coming, honky homos <laughs> have been forced out in recent years, like Lance Bass, Neil Patrick Harris, and T.R. Knight. It's only fair that Black folk take, their, take some heat too. We have no idea who Dean will name, but we've got some theories. We're not psychic, but we do have our theories. Obviously, Kanye West and Diddy will get a mention. Anyone who thinks West likes women needs to just listen to his lyrics. Sure, they're laden with vaginal love, and but we all know the saying. The uh, as for Diddy, two words: Farnsworth Bentley. Farnsworth. So when he wrote about you and Diddy, they did state that y'all were together. Fonsworth, you would allegedly at these parties. Now, there's also a comedian that came forward and said that he went to one of Diddy's parties and, you know, he was floating through, you know, um, the party and he was there. He has proof of him being there, floating through the party. And then he got to the back to where Diddy was. And it was just a bunch of men. There were no women back there, extremely dark, more so like a spa, you know, like type of ordeal, you know, like the red light, you know, um, type of situation you couldn't really see, you know, like who was in, you have to get really close to the person basically to see who they were, um, type of situation, no, not Cat Williams. Um, this is a, um, I forgot his name, but he's white. He's, he's not, it's not Cat Williams. This is somebody other than Cat, Cat Williams has said this too, but this is somebody other than Cat Williams. I forgot his name. I put him in my surviving. He's in my first surviving Diddy. Um, and he went um, to one of Diddy's parties and he hasn't been invited back to Diddy's party since because he traveled too far through the party. Um, he ended up being back where Diddy was and there, it was just, it was only men um, back there. And Diddy was back there with like exec, uh, the music executives and, you know, other artists, you know, and stuff, actors, but it was all men. Okay. All men. Fonsworth was one of those people. So, and we're going to get into that in the, in the next part of this too. Like, you know, because we're already an hour and a half in, you know, I try not to make my lives too long so that it's easy to keep up. But um, yeah, he, Fonsworth was there too. So with Fonsworth being, Fonsworth knows everything. Fonsworth has been around for everything. So I don't believe, well, up until Cassie. So anything after Cassie, kaput. Um, he don't, he don't, because he was, he was gone. You know, he left um, around that same time. Because Diddy tried to make it seem like there was no beef with him and Fonsworth. He made it seem as if Fonsworth, you know, that Fonsworth was not fired or anything like that. Well, if Fonsworth wasn't fired, if Diddy wasn't jealous that Fonsworth was doing his thing, then why did when Fonsworth did the show from G's to Gents, did Diddy feel the need to compete with him? Diddy wants you to be his next assistant, plus Usher Paris and Janet Jackson, Marilyn Monroe, and more in for the record. Let's scroll down a little bit. It says right here. Do you want to be the next Fonsworth Bentley? Diddy is looking for a new assistant. How is that not shade? He had a whole show of finding a new assistant. I thought he wasn't fired. I thought he still worked for you, you know, and all that good stuff. It's just, no, did he wanted us to know that he was going to ruin Fonsworth by any means necessary. That's why from G's to Gents only got two seasons and basically got cut off the, the second season. Diddy was not going to let him have anything without him. Mm -mm. It's, it's the control factor. If you do move up in life, it's going to be because I want you to. G's from, from G's to Gents was a successful show. It was a good show. I loved it. I'm like, oh my God, this is such a good idea. It was such a good idea. It really helped people. It, it really did. It helped. He really helped Fonsworth. It really helped those men. He really did. He, it, was, it was a cool show. I liked it. 
And um, it was a success. So for it to get cut, it got cut because Diddy had a cut. Diddy has a long-standing partnership with MTV, and he was not about to let Fonsworth um, get one up him. He was not going to let him do that. He wasn't. Fonsworth broke up with Diddy. Fonsworth broke up with Diddy. He did. One up him because the deal that Fonsworth had with from G's to Gents, Diddy didn't know about that deal. Fonsworth did all that behind Diddy's back. Diddy didn't know. He just kind of looked up and Fonsworth kind of had a show. Diddy's a busy dude. So it's not like, you know. So once he heard rumblings that Fonsworth was about to come out of a, come out with his own show, oh, you don't think you're going to clear that through me? That's when Diddy came out with this. Just out of the blue, he comes up with a show to replace Fonsworth. Although he stated that Fonsworth and him were still working together. That Fonsworth was not fired. He was just doing other things. Like he had some opportunities and he wanted to take them. Diddy did not know one of those opportunities was from G's to Gents. He did not know that. So when Diddy found out, it's not like, you know, and when I mean up and doing the show, meaning Fonsworth is already recording from G's to Gents. Diddy didn't find out after it was done, a finished product. No. He's Diddy. Of course, he's going to know prior. But the deal for the show and all of that stuff, Diddy did not know. And I feel that Fonsworth did that on purpose. He didn't want Diddy to know. Shout out to the 2.9 people in the building. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. So he didn't want him to know because he knew Diddy wouldn't like it. Because he was using Diddy's connection to get these things. So Fonsworth is not innocent. He's not. He isn't innocent. He used Diddy's connections to get that show. That is why Diddy pulled the plug. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Diddy hurt. Like, yeah, no, this will not be going on. Get rid of it. And that's exactly what MTV did. They got rid of it. Making the band was huge. Making the band was huge. They had a big deal with Diddy, like, that was a big show making the fan. Like, and it was multiple seasons. It was it was like four, I think it was four different groups that got made and followed. You know, the band, Danny Kane, Day 26, you know, and whatnot. So it, it was big. So MTV had a big partnership with Diddy. And they were looking at Fonzar Bentley as part of the deal, but Diddy let them know, like, no. Mm-mm. He don't get to use my connections. He don't get to use my connections. No different than Kanye West. Fonsworth met Kanye through Diddy. So all of these connections, you know, um, the outcast and all of that, that's all because of Diddy. So if you're not dealing with me no more, you know how our narcissists work. If you're not dealing with me no more, you're not dealing with nobody. It's me or nothing, you know? So since Fonsworth broke up, in my opinion, broke up with Diddy. Him and Kim Porter dumped Diddy the same year. Honestly, they both broke up with him the same year. And then it was Cassie. That was the year of Cassie. All of this went down in 2007. All of this. Fonsworth separated himself from Diddy in 2007. Diddy publicly said that he wasn't going with Kim Porter anymore in 2007. And then later on that year, announced that he was with Cassie. Fonsworth was gone already. He was already gone. So, of course, Diddy was trying to ruin everything that Fonsworth had going on. So I think that that's why Fonsworth, he knows better and just shows and pays homage to Diddy out of fear. Out of fear, he does that because he knows what Diddy's capable of. But he doesn't want anything to do with them. I mean, he's, he hasn't posted, basically, on social media since Diddy and Kanye fell out, which let's get into that. Let's get into that. So, right here. Kanye fused with Diddy. Wes uh, goats, sorry, him to do something illegal to me after Diddy defended him as a free thinker over white lives matter, okay? 
So Kanye launched a public feud with his friend Sean Diddy Combs on Friday, fighting with him over text and posting the screen grabs to Instagram. The two were locked in a uh, dispute over Kanye's White Lives Matter t-shirts, which uh, debuted at at Paris Fashion Week last month, to a storm of controversy. Over the course of their fiery exchange, Kanye 45 go to Diddy 52 to come do something illegal to me and vow to use you as an example to show the Jewish people who told you to (laughs) call me that no one can me or influence me a devout Christian, he is also declared in one of the Instagram captions, Jesus is Jew. Diddy was previously on one of Kanye's only famous friends to leap in his defense, calling him a free thinker and saying his message was misconstrued uh, while expressing disagreement with the White Lives Matter slogan. Okay. So Diddy came forward and defended Kanye and Kanye jumped down Diddy's throat. (laughs) So with the White Lives Matter, Diddy was basically coming forward saying that Kanye is a free thinker, you know, blah, 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 but said that he didn't necessarily agree with some of the comments that he said. Kanye got upset and flipped out um, on Diddy. But we need the back context. The reason Kanye flipped out on Diddy is not because Kanye is crazy. It's it's not because of that um, or anything like that. The reason why he did that is because they already don't like each other. Kanye does not like Diddy. Kanye hates Diddy. <laughs> it's like, literally. Okay? He hates him. He does not like him at all whatsoever. Okay? Diddy was previously one of Kanye's only famous. Okay, I read that. I don't know why I keep scrolling up. Um, okay, it would appear Diddy got in touch with Kanye directly to share his misgivings about the shirts, prompting an argument over text. His quote, I didn't like our combo, Kanye wrote. I'm selling these teas. Nobody gets in between me and my money. This is my grandfather texting you now. How creepy, Kanye. The Papa rapper told Diddy, never call me with no bullish like that again unless you're ready to greenlight me because uh, any because anybody who got on that tea is me. Presumably referring to his late friend and fashion collaborator Virgil oh, Abloh. How you say that? Uh, Kanye wrote, out of respect for everything you've meant to me, I'll be quiet as Virgil. But now I know, but now I know how I've hurt people with, I love with threats. Okay. So this is right here. Okay. There's Kanye text Diddy and said, um, say puff right there at the top. Okay. Okay. Um, we just wrote that. I didn't like combo. I'm selling these seats, blah, blah, blah. So at the end, what we didn't read, Kanye said, come do something illegal to me now, please. <laughs> Kanye says, come do something illegal to me now, please. Okay. So Kanye is saying that, you know, I know you be taking people out. I know you be hurting people and coming after people, blowing up people's cars. I don't know. This is before. This is pre-Cassie. Okay. This is pre-Cassie. Right. Um, so Kanye is saying like, look, come do something to me illegal right now, please. Okay. Kanye also said, this is why I'm the leader. I just made both of these guys my security because anything happened to me, y'all top, y'all the top suspects. I'd be selling white lives matter tees later today. So what he's saying, one of the people being one of the top suspects, he's talking about Diddy being one of those people. Okay. Let's keep reading. In a follow-up text, Kanye taunted his friend, come do something illegal to me now, please. He then posted a screen grab, uh, uh, sorry, screen grab of these texts to his Instagram page and wrote in the caption, God is love. My brother misspoke to me, but I still love him. Okay. So um, he said his text thundered ahead as Diddy fired back. As soon as I land, I'll, as soon as I land, we'll meet face to face. Send me an address. Okay. So Diddy responded to Kanye's long text messages. These up here. Okay, when you say come do something to me illegal now, please. Diddy's response is as soon as I land, we'll meet face to face, send me an address. And then Kanye says some explanatives and say, you, you fed. Okay. Um, F you, you fed. Okay. So he's calling him a fed. Okay. So Diddy did say, like, we we can, as soon as I land, we'll meet. And then Puff says, uh, blank 
send me an address. Let's stop playing these internet games. And I don't feel threatened. You'll be fine. Just love. So they just try to make it seem like we just gonna hug when you get here. Mm. Kanye says, this ain't a game. I'm going to show you as an example uh, to show the Jewish people that told you to call me to call me that no one can me or influence me. I told you this was war. Now you're going to get some business. <laughs> Kanye, does not like Diddy. Okay. Kanye hates Diddy. Okay. Now, this was, hold on, let me go to the top so I can pull the, show the proof of the day. Okay. This was in 2022. Okay. So this was last year. All right. Fonsworth has been posted since. They start beefing. Now, Instagram has been like, since like, it's been like three years. But on his Twitter, since this, he hasn't said a word. <laughs> he hasn't said a peep since these two have been at it. Okay? Because Fonsworth still works with Kanye. Fonsworth is doing just fine. He's not poor. None of that stuff. He's not down bad. It's none of those things. He is doing just fine. Fonsworth is still, he, and Fonsworth is actually rich. Like he's he's fine. He's wealthy. Um, him and his wife and their children, they're, they're doing good. Um, so yeah, Fonsworth is just fine. He still has not said anything against Diddy, but I do have some tea um, on that, in which we're going to get into in part two, because like I said, this can be a lot. It, it can be a lot of information. Um, shout out to Melissa for the cash app. Thank you so much, Melissa. And shout out to Catherine as well for the cash apps. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, yeah, so we will get into the rest of this tomorrow. Unfortunately, I have to leave. I have to go do a show over on Coffee, K-O-F-I. Um, the link will be put up. We'll be live over there in about 15 minutes. Um, but yes, we will be live with the rest of this story on Fonsworth Bentley tomorrow. So that's the update on Fonsworth. He's doing just fine. Um, he's still working. Um, he's producing um, tracks for people. Um, I believe he's in the process of maybe writing another etiquette book. I'm not sure. I, I need to look um, at that because I have so much information. Um, so we will definitely be finishing this tomorrow. Shout out to the over the 2.9 people that we had in the building. Um, please hit the like, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying all of this good tea, you know, that we're dropping on you guys with receipts. So um, I love you guys. So we will be back tomorrow into the next show. We're going to head over to coffee. You can feel free to come over and join us. Um, I'll see y'all then. Thank you for all the super stick. Subscribe and I love you all.